Okay, we go back to our example, right? But now let's put a point that it's down here. Okay, and this will complete our our you know list of problems that we could have for finding stresses at these vertical stresses and uh, and pressure, spore pressure at a at points. Okay, in a in a profile. So let's say this point C is five meters from this interface here. Okay, and we would like to know what are the vertical geo stresses. These are the total stress and the effective stress that act vertically on the horizontal stress on the horizontal plane at this point, and also the pore pressure at this point, of course, because we needed to calculate the effective stress. So I'm going to move this up a little bit and we'll calculate what those stresses are. We begin with, as always, the stress that acts vertically on the point, of course on the horizontal plane, because it's a vertical sigma, right? Okay, remember, sigma is a normal stress, normal... Okay. Uh, sorry, I ran, I ran out of the battery for the video thing, so uh, the camera. So let's see, where were we? Here's our, here's our example, right? We said here's our point in question, point C is in the clay layer now, right? And so we're trying to find the geostatic stresses for that point, the geostatic vertical stresses at that point. So we begin with the verti uh, vertical total stress, okay? So as always, what we do is add everything that's above that point, all the sublayers. Okay, so first we begin with the dry sand. We have three meters of dry sand, three meters of 18, sorry, gamma equal to 18 sand. We have, if this is three meters, then, and this is 8, then from here to here there's 5, right? 3 and 5 make 8. So we have 5 meters of saturated sand, and we have 5 meters, this is of course not to scale, we have 5 meters of saturated clay. This clay is below the water table, so it's saturated. So here's 22, so 5, right? That is a vertical stress. What is the pore pressure at point B? Uh, sorry, point C. Well, here's the point, right? Here's the water table. So there's five meters plus five meters. That's ten meters of water above this point. That's the pressure head, right? Ten meters of water. Nine point eight one. That's gamma, right? So this is about ten times ten is a hundred. Okay, and the principle, sorry, the principle of effective stress, effective stress principle by Terzaghi, tells us that the vertical effective stress at point C is the vertical stress at point C, the vertical total stress at point C minus the pore pressure, right? So, okay. So if we calculate this, this is uh, 30, 136 minus 110, right? So you can calculate this, etc., and you can find the, what the value is. So the point here is, of course, not to calculate, I mean, you have to calculate these numbers, etc., but the point here is that we basically, if we go back to the example, to the profile, we add all the components that are above a given point. Okay, for point A we have dry, two meters of dry sand. For point B we have three meters of dry sand and two meters of saturated sand, right? And for point C we have two, uh, sorry, uh, three meters of dry sand, five meters of saturated sand, and five meters of clay, saturated clay. Okay. Just for completeness here, um, 
just the numbers, right? So 36 plus 100 plus uh, 110. So we have 246. 246 minus 100 is 146 kPa. Of course, that's a unit of stress, right? So now we know, at this point, we know how to calculate vertical stresses, vertical geostatic stresses, at any point in a profile.